Listen, we're dealing with something mighty on here. We're dealing with something mighty on here. Everybody, I want to leave you with this word. Before you go to sleep. I want to leave you with this word before you go to sleep. Now, remember, it was the spirit of the Lord that began to use Haggai to say that the silver and the gold is mine in Haggai chapter 2. Hey, God, chapter two, verse eight and on. But something began to happen with Haggai where the father was showing Haggai that the Holy Spirit is the owner over all money moving. He's the rightful owner, even though it's in the hands of the wicked or even though it's in the hands of people that are doing different ventures. The owner is actually the Holy Spirit. And remember the Holy Spirit is on earth. Remember what Haggai begins to reveal in Haggai chapter two, that I will begin to pour out my spirit and the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former. Now I want you to catch this. He's dealing <laughs> with the glory of the, the latter house being greater than the glory of the former house. So here's what I want you to see here. When we deal with the glory of the, 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 the latter house being greater than the glory of the former, when we deal with glory, it's actually wealth also. So the glory is actually also wealth and riches. It's the financial ability of God. See, saints, what I was reading to you yesterday in Matthew chapter 15 was that the disciples only was familiar with the miracle Jesus, the healing of the sick Jesus. They knew that if somebody had diseases that they was going to recover. But the, the King Jesus that was wealthy, they were still learning that. The King, the King Jesus that was financial, they were still grasping that. Saints, remember, they wanted to send people away. They did not want to feed the people. King Jesus is telling them, I'm concerned about their provision. But saints, what King Jesus did in Matthew chapter 15 is that he gave them more than what they needed which shows you that King Jesus is in the mindset of wealth because that's what wealth is. Wealth is the Lord giving you something that you will enjoy without any limitations on it. The wealth of God is an anointing of the Holy Spirit. The riches of God is an anointing of the Holy Spirit and it is a mantle that you will start wearing when you start caring about the Lord. If you're taking notes, write that down. Wealth is a mantle, it's an anointing that you start wearing, that, that you start wearing when you start caring about the Lord. Saints, remember the Bible says, casting all your cares on the Lord for he cares for you. 
Well, guess what the secret is to that? You cast all your cares upon the Lord because your cares is a sanctified place that's only for the Lord. So he's saying, cast all your other cares on me because you was only created to care for me. So once you, once you cast all your cares on the Lord, now the Lord is responsible to deal with what your caring, your, your previous cares was so that you could be free to care for the Lord so that nothing will be holding you back. Now, here's what you want to catch. Wealth is reserved for the caretakers of God. As a man and as a woman, you have been programmed to be concerned about the Lord. You have been created to be concerned about the Lord day and night. I read the story about the Shunammite woman earlier. The Shunammite woman was a woman that cared for the Lord. Luke chapter eight, Susanna was a woman that cared for the Lord. John, the disciple, cared for the Lord. If you remember in uh, 1 John, all John is talking to you about is caring for the Lord. He said, if any man loves the Lord, he'll love his brother as well. He'll love his, 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 his brethren because you're caring for the Lord. Now, when we deal with 1 John, remember 3 John says that he wish above all things that you prosper be in health. Why did John have a revelation of prosperity? Because he had a revelation of believing his prophet. His prophet was King Jesus. So John was able to talk about the wishes of God because John was, 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 was a partaker of that wish. Supernatural prosperity, divine prosperity. And, and then what John, because he was so in love with the Lord, he was so in love with his prophet, his king, he was also able to define prosperity in different elements, that it wasn't just money cometh. It was divine mind cometh. It wasn't just money cometh, it was mind cometh. It wasn't just wealth cometh, it was health cometh. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He, he was saying that I know realms of prosperity that goes beyond what you think in your mind when you first hear it. I know that there is a prosperity anointing for the soul. There's a prosperity anointing for the emotions. There's a prosperity anointing for your heart. There's a prosperity anointing for your physical body. There's a prosperity anointing that causes you to have energy and stamina and endurance and longevity and peacefulness and joy. There's a prosperity that flows from the inside out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. John knew that because he was perfect in love. He was perfect in sowing. John was a master sower. John knew how to take the seed and flip it into harvest appearance. He knew how to take the seed and flip it into harvest appearances. What, what was going on here? John knew that prosperity had different segments. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. Oh my gosh. What is, what, what is John, John talking about the different dimensions of prosperity? Money cometh also gives you wisdom of what in your life is out of order. So that's why when you have money cometh on you, you'll start eating better because, or you're sleeping better or you're resting. Um, the spirit releases money cometh 
with also an awareness of other covenants that you have not taken dominion over. Money cometh is a prophetic anointing that gives you sight of other benefits that you need to arrest. The Holy Spirit made Moses rich with perfect health. Did you just catch what I just said there? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit made Moses rich with perfect health. His sight was perfect. Since I remember the, the glasses doctor was up there, they did try to trick me when I was small. I know they was trying to get some money. They told my mama that I couldn't see. Uh, my mama said, my mama said, my mama, my mama, my mama said, <laughs> mama said, mama said, mama said, Oh, Michael Jackson tongues. Michael, 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 Michael felt this. <laughs> he was just a, mama said, mama said, he just felt it. He just felt it. He just felt it. Michael Jackson was up there twirling around. That was his own praise break. I done did it better than him, though. <laughs> I did what Michael was trying to do. He couldn't do the two-step. He couldn't do the flip up in the air. He was trying to do it. I could have gave him the tongues to do it. It wasn't Mama Se Mama Samo Maku Sandio. Michael was trying to my, 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 Michael was trying to get in the flow. He was, he was trying to he was trying to call those things that be not as though they were. But Mama Se Mama Samo Maku Sandio Kashaya wasn't the tongues to do it, Michael. It wasn't the tongues to do it. It wasn't the tongues to do it. He said Michael didn't want to want to sleep with no woman to have his children. I think he was trying to airdrop his sperm. That's what he was trying. <laughs> I think he was trying to alley you. I think he thought that he could airdrop with with the sound of with the air sound of effects. with the sound effects. They said that he ain't go with his children. His, his he ain't. <laughs> Michael said, no, no, I just, <laughs> I, I don't want to feel no tingling. I just want to feel no tingling. No, I just don't, I just don't like how it feels. <laughs> then people had accounts that Michael used to talk to women, but he Somebody said that Michael had like big booty woman. I was like, what in the world? Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait. 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 Did, did Michael did Michael have some type of fetish that we didn't know? Wait a minute, huh? Wait a dang <laughs> Blessed be God. Yeah, but I doubt it because the woman that he was with, she, she, <laughs> the, the only thing big on her was her shoulders. That's, her, that's, her, that's, her, nah, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. See, people be trying to lie on you when you die. That's why we ain't trying to have no funeral. Since if I wasn't supernatural and if I wasn't just going to be translated, I still wouldn't have received no funeral. Because when you're at the funeral, like like I said, people be saying dumb stuff. Melissa, I know that you met her. That's, Melissa, guess what? I know why you follow me. Because I remind you of Michael. <laughs> Some of y'all not being honest. You're only following me because of my moves. <laughs> I'm joking around. I'm playing around. I'm playing around. I'm playing around. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let the church say hallelujah. Isaiah saw a realm in the spirit where wealth was located by the great God Jehovah for the children of God's benefits. Isaiah saw 
a department where the Lord was going to take whatever you had and increase it to the, its highest level and then expose to you higher levels of that same thing. And it's like a perpetual unveiling of abundance, a perpetual unveiling of abundance. Isaiah, Haggai, all of them prophesied about the wealth of God being superior in your life. It doesn't matter what you have experienced as a man, there's another level of divine wealth for you as a man. It doesn't matter what you have tasted of in the form of finances as a woman, there's another dimension that God wants to minister to you out of. Saints, let me ask you this question. What's gonna happen to you when you finally see Ark of the Covenant wealth, Ark of the Covenant riches, Ark of the Covenant blessings? Let's go here. Uh, I wanna take you here as well. Uh, second Kings, second Kings chapter four, verse eight. I want to read it out of this text as well. Let's go here. Um, it says one day Elisha went to Shunem and a wealthy woman lived there. Wait a minute. So saints, one thing that you got to catch about this Shunammite woman is that she is wealthy. There's a wealth anointing on her and she has power to get wealth. Now, here's what I want you to see. No wonder Elisha was easy for her assignment because she knew wealth activations that a prophet is a wealth activation to your life in disguise. This is why she does not procrastinate with the spirit of the Lord, but she sees Elisha as a door and a gate in the spirit. So, 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 so the Shunammite woman had a seer's anointing to detect the seer's ability once she blessed the seer. This Shunammite woman is a wealthy woman. Now, after she receives the prophet's reward, look what the Bible says in verse 17. Remember the prophet prophesied she would have a son. He said, and the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her according to the time of life. Let's go to verse 18. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father's to the reapers. You can't go to reapers without sores. Y'all not hearing me. You're not hearing me. Saints, the reason why this woman, at Sh this Shunammite woman is wealthy is because she sold her way into the wealth. This man is wealthy because he is a saw. Both of them have sowing hearts. This woman is wealthy because 
she is a master sword. This and and and, and the father is a sword too. Now look at verse 19. He said unto his father, my head, my head. And he said to the lad, carry him to his mother. Watch this. When the, when the son said, my head, my head. The head is where the anointing flows. But saints, the father said, carry the seed to the mother because the mother had a master sowing anointing on her. <laughs> the father said, carry the seed, carry the seed to his mother. Watch verse 20. Wow. I just got a revelation. That's why the Lord gives seed to the sower. Because the father will always say, carry the seed to the sower. Think about this. The father in this text, we in this Old Testament, imagine, he says, my head, my head. Because the head is the location where the oil is flowing, the anointing is flowing. And the father says, carry the seed to his mother. The father knows that this mother is a master at the seed. And so the father says, I know that this seed is having an issue, but give it to the mother and let her solve it. I want you to see this because this is deeper than we really, really know. How many of y'all feel the anointing off of this? This is really deeper than we actually know. And the spirit of God was dealing with me since what? Three, three, 72 hours over this. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on his, her knees. When they pit the seed, they pit the seed at her knees. Why? Because the knees represent prayer. The seed, the knees, the, the, the seed at the knees, the knees represent connectivity to the will of God. The knees represent humility to the plan of God. And the Bible said that he died. Because saints, I want you to catch this. The seed got to die before the rest, before the harvest can come into your life. It got to be sown. The seed got to be sown before it can come back in harvest power. So when the father saw the seed and he said, my head, my head, the anointing right there, the anointing, the anointing right there, the anointing is on the seed. Your seed got a head. That's why I told you that there's mantle on the seed that you sow. The seed has a mantle on it. So watch this. The father has knowledge, but the father is wise enough to know 
If this seed is going to be in its highest level of protection and functionality, go give it to the mother. Because she going to know what to do with this seed. Now watch this. When the seed comes, they, the, the, the seed is placed at the knees of the mother. Why? Because she connected to heaven. She connected to the will of the father. She, she, she a humble angel. The spirit of the Lord God is on her in disguise. The people in her region might not know it, but she a woman that fears the Lord. You, you, you see, see, but we, we got to applaud the father because even though the father, he, 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 he with this Shunammite woman, he still is able to detect there's something about her that I know that she can handle this seed. I, I might not know everything that's going on, but I know that she could handle the seed. That's I, 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 I might not agree with her, but, but I know that she is a master with the seed. That's I feel the anointing, man. I feel the anointing. I'm about to go because I'm only supposed to be on here for 21 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I'm saying? But 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 the spirit of God, he told me to prophesy this on here Be because saints, uh, uh, the father would have let that seed die. And the judgment of God would have came on the father if the father didn't give it to the mother. So, 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 so the father got a prophetic grace on him because if this seed would have died, then this father would have came underneath judgment, but the father gave it to the mother. The father kept the plan of God going. She. See, 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 you got to understand as men, we are bearers of the kingdom and the plans of God. And, 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 and though women are anointed to do certain things, as a man, you're going to empower her to do it. She needs you to anoint her to do it. Saints, that's why I told some of y'all, you can't sow into me. I anointed you to sow. All I did was just place my spirit, my mantle that honors and fears God. I placed it on you. I gave it to you. And then you sons on here, be of good cheer because what the Holy Ghost going to do, he going to put money in your hand for you to empower your wives to sow. That, that, that's what the Holy Ghost going to do through this apostolic connection. You going to be making money and paying in her hand so that she could be empowered to sow. Do you, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you understand, man? Come on, man. Because what the father did was said, I'm going to put the seed back in her hands and let her sow it where it's supposed to be. Ah. Some of y'all need to say this. Money coming to me now. You need to decree that in your house. You need to decree that in your house and feel good about it. Don't let no devil interrupt what the Holy Spirit is using you to do in this season of your life. Be of good cheer. Give no place. Just stay in the wealth grace. Come on, man. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let the Holy Ghost have his way with you. This your time. The spirit of the Lord is upon thee. He has anointed you to preach the gospel to the poor. Some of y'all don't understand. Every time you sow a seed into prophet Joshua Holmes, you preaching the gospel to, through me. You know how many people we reach on Facebook in just 24 hours? We reached over 2 million people. Over 2 million souls. 2 million people. You preaching the gospel every time you sow, every time you help me, every time you anointing my head, you empowering me with this gospel. 
What preacher you know reach over 2 million people on a social media outlet that don't even love God? They don't even like Jesus. You know how many times they done told me that they were going to take my account off? Huh? Every account I got is banned. <laughs> Every account that I, including this one. Every account that I minister on is banned. How I'm still here? You ask Jesus, man, because we go down to Galaxy 666 and we deal with the principalities and the powers and the spirits that's behind the whole gig gig. And we overturn some things. We overturn some things. See, the apostle goes before you to pave the way for you to step into your wealth. The apostle goes before you so that you can step into your sowing anointing. You was created to sow. You was created to reap. You was created to live at the top. You was created to minister unto God. The apostle goes before you to pave the way so that this will be easy. We, don't, we, 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 we go before you so that you can wear the crown of riches. So that your life could take on that easy yoke. Prophet Joshua Holmes is an easy yoke that been sent around your neck. I've been sent to give you this easy yoke of the gospel. That whatsoever you sow, that shall you also reap. I come to give you the easiness of this gospel that if you give, it shall be given back unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking again, running over. Shall men give into your bosom. People are going to be driven by the Holy Ghost to bless you because you chose to bless God. Nobody can stop what the Spirit will do through your sowing hands. Just let the Holy Ghost have his way. I did. I'm still letting the Holy Ghost have, my, have his way with me. It don't matter. It don't matter. I still let the Holy Ghost have his way with me. I sow every single day. Every day of my life I sow. Every day of my life I sow over, over hundreds of dollars. Every single day. Because, because I'm a partaker of this divine nature. <laughs> see, see, sowing is the nature of God. Sowing is the nature of God. Every man and every woman has sowing grace inside of them. You was created to help this gospel go forth with your money. When I learned that principle at the age, uh, 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 as a little boy, I started sowing my way out. Before I was even seven years old, I was already sowing. I was already sowing. I was already unlocking harvests. Oh, my God. Saints, the Lord, the Lord so amazing. I'm going to tell you something. I didn't even realize it. I remember one time, you know, I ain't never liked no mans. <laughs> when, I, when I was a little boy, I was real pretty. Some people used to think I was a girl because I had my hair long. I had dreads and stuff. They thought I was a little girl. They thought, he too cute to be a boy. They, they tried to hate on me. They tried to hate on me. And saints, there was this, there was this, uh, there was this little girl. Them little girls be fast. Been three years old, but they, they, they up there, they, they on birth control pills. <laughs> At three years old on birth control, but girl, what you, what you, what you, what you popping them pills? The, the birth control, the birth control, the birth control. What you trying to control? This, this, this is. I'm telling your mama. Now I'm telling your mama. That this, this. I'm not gonna let it go. I'm gonna tell your mama on this one. This, this. I'm not gonna let your mama just win this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go tell your mama. <laughs> your mama needs to know that you popping perks over here. <laughs> but there was this one girl, and, and since. The little girl, now, what was so wild to me, the little girl was pretty, right? And I knew she was pretty. I wasn't going to do nothing with her, but I just wanted to shake her hand, just say hello to her, that's all. But, but since the little girl had the biggest crush on me, man, I was out there riding my bicycle, minding my own business, just a little boy, and about... Three to five girls ran up to me, smelling like baby oil, <laughs> smelling like castor oil in, in Johnson to Johnson lotion and powder. 
<laughs> One of them has smelt like breast milk. I'm like, <laughs> you got to wipe your mouth. I'm not, that's, that's your, that's your prerogative. You doing yours. You, you can't bring me involved in that. You got to wipe your mouth. Baby wipes. Go ask your mama. She got the baby wipes. Got to wipe that one down. You got to wipe that one down. And they came up to me. They say, you know, you know, so-and-so. They said, they said, they said, she got a crush on you. She told us to come get you. I said, oh, 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 oh excuse me. I tried to play it off the best I knew how. You know what I'm saying? I tried to play it off the best I knew how. I was like, you know, uh, 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 well, 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 uh, tell her that, um, uh, tell her I said thank you. You know what I'm saying? Tell her I said thank you. And they up there at the went, go tell her. And then she tried, she, she was up there. She came up to me. Now, mind you, uh, here's the wild thing. I come to find out that my neighbor, that was his great granddaughter. My neighbor. So then she was always begging to come over there by my neighbor. So guess what I did? I stayed inside the house. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I ain't go outside no more. I ain't do nothing, man. I, I, I felt it was a trap. I felt she was trying to get child support at the age of three. <laughs> you, <laughs> we was going to be, we was going to be in court at age of three trying to argue. Nah, this, this money is for my fruity snacks, judge. This, this, this not for this. This now, saints, look what the Bible said. And when the child was grown, it fell on that day. Then he went out to his father, to the reapers. Why is his father out amongst reapers? Because saints, this Shunammite woman and this man are wealthy because they are honoring God. They're honoring the Lord and they have learned how to keep the father at the center of their hearts and minds. They are amongst reapers. You know why they're amongst reapers? Because they've been sowing. So they're there to gather the harvest. And that's another revelation that I want to give you, that when you are a sower, stay in the right heart so that you can receive your harvest. Don't let the enemy disturb you with anything and cause you to mess up your sowing testimony. Repent, forgive, walk in humility, and allow the anointing of money cometh to keep on flowing in your direction. Let that river of riches keep on hitting you. Let that power of prosperity and provision keep on locating you. Money cometh demands that you learn how to have tough skin. That means that you don't get too sensitive, but that you stay in the flow of love. You stay in the flow of, of grace. You stay in the flow uh, uh, of supernatural meekness. Because guess what? The meek shall inherit the earth. Glory to God. Guess what? The meek shall inherit the earth. So every time you make a decision to stay teachable and learn, keep on learning, keep on walking in discernment, keep on walking in growth. Don't beat on yourself, huh? Don't beat on yourself and you ain't, you beat on yourself, you see what I'm saying? Never mind, I don't want to think about it. The devil is alive, just saw a demon said, Spencer on it, blocked, keep on going. Uh, Second Kings chapter four, some of y'all gonna catch that later, but you don't sow enough seeds, so you're gonna be a little slow to what I just said there. Um, them Facebook people, saints, you ever had a Facebook, them Facebook people, old people on Facebook, they be up there doing a lot of crazy stuff. There was this old white lady, I didn't even know I was following her, the old white lady, old white lady just, she sent me a, a sausage emoji. I was like, what, what? Oh, no, she didn't. You Don't play with me, because I'll I bop, I bop you, it don't matter how, how old you is, I'm not you. Bop, bop you in the eye right there. I don't care if the cat are, Bop, bop you in the eye. You get knocked out too. You just, just an old woman. She the old white woman. And saints, you got to be careful because that old white woman will call you. They'll call you. 
<laughs> you know I be going viral on Facebook, so the stuff gonna happen. They'll call you, dog, on it. They'll call you. She 89 years old on Cialis pills and stuff. <laughs> she on Cialis pills and stuff, Thompson. Thompson, the Lord said to call you. That you supposed to give me a word. God told you that you're supposed to visit me. <laughs> what in the golden girls? This is... And then when they send you a sausage emoji and them, them drip drops, drip drop, drippity drippity drop, don't send no emoji, no drip drop, no drippity drippity drop. Because <laughs> that is deception, number one. Uh, Second Kings chapter four. Second Kings chapter four. Look at this here. So the son dies in verse 20. Let's go to verse 21. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. Now watch this. She lays the seed at the bed of the man of God. What does the bed represent? Rest. The bed represents peace and wholeness. So she pits the seed at the location of the bed. Because saints, you have to understand that when you're honoring God and you're sowing seed, there remaineth a rest. And the rest is prophetic rest. Because you, the only reason why you entering into the rest is because you decided to believe the prophet. Because you decided to listen to the prophetic word and receive it. Now the Lord allows you to step into a realm where Satan can't bombard you, enslave you, or manipulate your life any longer. Satan don't even got leverage. Remember, he said, I can't touch Job because there's a hedge around him. That was the seed that created that hedge. The seed is a hedge creator. That when the enemy comes at you, your family like a flood, come at you, your business like a flood, come at you, your assignment like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise the standard. Saints, look at this here. She lays the seed on the bed of the man of God. So she pits the seed. And she locates the seed at the bed. Now watch what happens. Now saints, I want you to catch this. The bed also represents secrets. Man, I ain't got a lot of time, man. This this hot, man. This hot. I mean, y'all getting blessed by this is some hot stuff. I'm giving you a lot of revelation on here. The bed also represents secrets. So 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 remember, the seed allows you to become a recipient of the secrets of God. Because the Lord can trust you when you're not a thief. The Lord can trust you when you don't eat the seed, when you pit him first priority in your finances. He know that he can trust you, trust you with more money, trust you with more secrets, trust you with more keys to walk through more spiritual doors. Trust you with more authority to receive from the windows of heaven where he pour you out a blessing you ain't got room enough to receive. He trusts you with the gates, wealth gates, Isaiah chapter 20. Look at this here, Isaiah, uh, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 11, rather. Second Kings chapter four. Let's go ahead to verse 21. Now, 21 is so significant. Remember what I taught you about 21. It says that he laid him on the bed of the man of God and he shut the door upon him and went out. This is very powerful. She shuts the door. Because when you sow a seed, don't try to pull the seed out the ground. She put the seed in the right direction and then she shut the door on the seed. See, see, the other part of you sowing is that the devil going to try to make you regret that you sold. Remember, I told you that when I first started off, 
I was sewing and I was sewing 30 plus dollars. And I was, if I got 500, then I started sewing. Out of that 500, I started doing radical stuff. Then I got a, I got a check in the mail for $7,000. And then I sold out of that. And then I got another check out of nowhere, $7,000. And guess what? When I was sewing, that's why I told you my secret. I knew how to remain sanctified with my seed. Because Satan always going to try to tempt you and make you regret your seed. She went go shut the door because she telling the seed, I will have nothing, no connection with you any longer. I leave you in the location of the man of God, in his presence, in his atmosphere, in his ministry in his secrets, in his glory, in his power, in his soul. Look at this here. She shuts the door and went out. She does not stay with the seed because if you stay with your seed, you'll regret that you sowed it. Saints, Hannah did the same thing with Samuel. She took her seed to, to Eli and she walked out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why Hannah went to another city. She went to another location. She went to another household. Because guess what? Hannah said, once I put my seed in the right ground, I can't dig it up. I can't let myself regret my decision to honor God. Man of God and woman of God, never regret your decision of honor towards the Lord because it shall surely open up a lifestyle that you want to live anyway. Every time you let the father have his way with your finances, rejoice and celebrate yourself. Praise God and give him glory. Stand before him with the banner of praise and say, thank you, Lord, that my eyes have been opened up. I praise you because once you break open in the seed, no demon in the satanic kingdom has the authority to hold you back to your blood bought lifestyle. The wealth of God is blood bought. The riches of God is blood bought. And when you let the Holy Spirit have his way with you and you are sowing your way out, praise God and give God praise that he's able to use you because you're accomplishing something that he loves. And saints, the seed is surgery to God. Because when you sow and see you healing his heart and the seed ends up healing your heart. The seed is a surgeon. While you are sowing, you're working on the heart of God. God's heart was broken in Genesis chapter 8. Even when he sent the flood, his heart was broken. We find out in Ezekiel that it's not even his will for people to die in their sins, that he's still heartbroken. When he saw all them people get drowned up in the flood, the Lord's heart was still broken. But the seed was a surgeon. Noah telepathically linked up with the spirit of the living God and found something that could mend his heart. Imagine that God's heart was broken in Genesis chapter eight and needed a healer and a sower answered the problem that God had. It was a sower that came on the scene and said, Lord, I know that you hurt, but this is how I know that this is going to medicate you and fix you and give you relief and give you restoration. The seed restored Noah and then God restored the blessing on Noah. Look at Genesis chapter nine. God starts to say to Noah what he said to Adam. He said, I'll bless you, Adam. Now he's telling Noah, I'll bless you. I'll make you fruitful, be fruitful and multiply. He pronounces the same mantle that was on the first man that God created. Now God places the mantle on Noah. Why? Because of the seed. Whenever you start sowing seed, God will pronounce the blessing that he placed on the Adam that was perfect back on you. That's the power of the seed that the Lord will go back to the place before he was angry, before he was disturbed, before he was bothered, before he was frustrated, before he had wrath, before he had vengeance. All those different type of things will be removed. And God said, I come to create your pleasure. I come to create your Havila. May the angels of Havila be on your life in the name of the Lord. 
May the angels of her villa be on your life in the name of the Lord. From this moment forth, may the angels of her villa be over your life in the name of the Lord. And I decree this over you as well. May the seed become the surgery device that you use towards your father in heaven. Saints, I want to say something to you and I want you to think about this. The Lord still to this day is still getting hurt. Saints, do you know that there's billions of people on the earth that constantly get distracted from him? Some will never praise him. Some will never sow into him. Some will never honor him. And guess what? When your heart is broken and you say, Lord, I just want to be here for you. It's not even about. See, saints, the thing about it is this. Here's what happened to me when I started sowing. I realized I'm not just sowing into this prophet. I'm sowing into the Lord God. I'm showing him, Lord, I thank you. I honor you. I respect you. I love you. I praise you. I bless you. I want you to be happy. Saints, Solomon wanted the Lord to be happy and the Lord made Solomon happy. Isaac wanted the Lord to be pleased with him. He sold his way out in that land. He was a sowing man. He had strong sowing hands. He kept on sowing and he wanted the Lord to be happy with him. And guess what began to happen? Then the father set him on a path where now all that he has is in abundance. Saints, remember, he went from prosperity to prosperity because he loved healing God's heart with his seed. Isaac didn't understand the reason why there was a famine in the land is because God is displeased whenever there's a famine. See, Genesis chapter 26 is a mystery. But saints, I want you to catch this in the spirit. The reason why the land was in a famine was because God wasn't pleased with what was going on. So imagine this people of God. The Lord let him be in that location where God wasn't pleased because God wanted somebody to please him with the seed. So when Isaac went to run, God said, don't run from this. I need you to stay right here. And then God starts letting his mind link up with Abraham, how Abraham obeyed the voice of God in Genesis 26, because what God is saying to him, remember Isaac, it was you that your father offered up on the altar and you was the greatest seed that he could sow into me. Remember, you came out of a sower. So since when, I, when Isaac was in that situation of the famine, the Lord put him in that situation to show him there's something in this land that has hurt me. There's something in this land that has broken my heart. And I need somebody to rise up with the seed and start sowing into me. So saints, watch this here. When the spirit of God let him be in that situation of the famine, it was for him to discover something that the Lord was being deprived of and that seed sowing. I want you to think about it. It was seed sowing. The spirit let him be in a place where God was saying, now I'm going to let you see that there's something going on in this land that is creating my pain. And Isaac, he found the gold mine. He found what God was hurting, where God was hurting. That God was being robbed of honor. And guess what? He started sowing his way out. And the Lord made him rich, 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 rich. rich.